Good morning. It's time now for the Mayor's Report for Troy's TV5's David DeNoyer. I'm Troy Community Radio's Clint Myers. Along with me is Mayor Michael Beamish. Good morning. Well, good morning, Clint. It's a wonderful day in Troy, Ohio. Oh, it is another beautiful day in Troy. Um, and we've had some pretty warm weather here lately. Uh, I'd say and, pretty and humid wet, yeah. uh, weather as well, <laughs> but you know, we still are finishing out August. August has always been uh, considered a hot and humid month, but uh, we keep moving forward. Uh, we're heading in the home stretch, uh, Labor Day's this Just, weekend. Yeah, right around the, yeah, right here we are at Correct. Labor Day. Um, last weekend, now because uh, Prouty Plaza was a little wet on Friday, the Fry's ban was postponed. But the Air Force Band went off without a hitch then on Sunday. And, and a, a wonderful show they provided to many people who did come out on that warm uh, Sunday evening. Uh, the Air Force Band of flight uh, consists of Wright Brass and Systems Go. There are two smaller groups that perform. They come together when they come to Troy, Ohio. They like Troy, Ohio. They've been here for years. Uh, and they, they always enjoy uh, the hospitality, the patriotism, and we have to keep remembering these are servicemen and women uh, that are serving their country, and many of them have been deployed and come back, but they provide a lot of high energy music, um, sound, and vocals, uh, and it was a wonderful, um, wonderful performance. You know, and this earlier this uh, in July, you may recall, we had the Army Band mm -hmm. that came to Troy as well, and we certainly would like to see them come back on a regular basis. I have to give a shout out and a kudos to one of our uh, merchants downtown who did something very special for both the Army Band as well as the Air Force Band of Flight, and that's Debbie Char at the uh, Troy uh, Bulk Barn and Deli, right on the corner of our square here. Uh, she, uh, in both cases, invited uh, the military uh, uh, performers to come into her establishment and she offered them free ice cream after the concert. And it was a good thing because both days they could probably, it was refreshing <laughs> to them. But you know, she didn't have to do that. And that shows the Troy spirit and the appreciation for what uh, our military does for us and protecting our freedoms. And it was a small way of her saying thank you for their service. And I know I had many of both the Army Band members as well as the Air Force Band of Flight members say how much they appreciate that hospitality. So that's what community spirit's all about. I was just going to say, it's just another one, it's just another uh, feather in the cap for Troy. Um, and I know uh, we have lots of people, everybody there that was attending uh, really, really appreciated the concert, uh, both concerts, and uh, I hope we can continue to have them coming back for many years to come. Now the Air Force Band really reminds me of the group Chicago, that high energy, the brass, they've just got a, a great sound. Uh, 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 you know, and you energy. Know, you, you said it, energy and sound, uh, and their vocalists are wonderful. Absolutely. Now, uh, something else that has just come back into swing, football. Football season, and uh, this is an exciting time for around Miami County. All the teams are back in action for the fall season, including the Troy Trojans. And I have that opportunity to be the voice of the Trojans, so it's an exciting time for me. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Troy Community Radio and uh, public access uh, for what you are doing to help promote the football season. I know you've got all the home games and you have also some special games as well on your docket so that those who cannot come to the stadium to enjoy the game firsthand can still uh, get a pretty good idea of what's going on on the football field. And so I want to thank you, uh, Clint and uh, David and, and all the team. Uh, Chuck Fox, I think, is doing. Uh, yeah, Chuck Dave Fox Fisher. is going to be doing with uh, it. Dave Fisher and Scott Hornberger is going to be calling games. And, so. and so I have to say thank you again. You've been wonderful for community support and promotion. And the football season is another way of you uh, getting involved in your community, and I thank you. Well, as much as we can get uh, kind of tied in with the uh, kids over at the school and the high school, and uh, as far as that goes, we also have some other ideas that we're going to be working with the media, advanced media class this year. Wonderful. So uh, the more we can get tied together, the even better. 
but that, that'll the, be a surprise. Getting into the educational arena, I like that too. <laughs> so so uh, what a team. Uh, thank you very much. Now for uh, Labor Day this weekend, now there's uh, Troy Civic Band is going to be playing. That's absolutely correct. and They're another uh, local professional group. Uh, I certainly encourage people to come downtown to listen to them. If for some reason we would have bad weather, they always go to Troy Christian, so it's it's going to be there uh, for a concert. It's a Labor Day concert. They always provide great music and our local talent, and, and certainly the McIntoshes are to be commended for their uh, efforts. Com their commitment to, their commitment uh, as to well the as the Troy. Troy Civic Band and their commitment as a well. Absolutely. All right, uh, and now that we've hit Labor Day, <laughs> that brings us to, uh, it's almost a dirty word, fall. Fall. When I think fall, I think leaves. And yeah. I bet everybody else is thinking, oh, I got the rakes out. And uh, and that's going to happen. Uh, you know, we get into September, October, the, the leaves will start changing and they will fall. And uh, that's why I have a very special guest with me today to talk about uh, our street services and what we provide. And I have with me our street foreman, Jerry Mullins. Um, just a, a real good Troy citizen uh, and a great employee for the city of Troy. All right, Jerry, glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you, glad to be here. Um, tell us a little bit, what what can the listeners do and the, the citizens here in town that will make that leaf cleanup and debris cleanup go a lot smoother? Well, first of all, we are going to, um, we always go out and pick up the leaves. All you really have to do is get them out to the curb we ask that when you do rake them out to the curb that you leave about an 18 inch space between the curb and the leaves, the back of the leaves. That way water can get down the gutter and still get to the catch basins. That's a good idea. Uh, and uh, we've, got a, we've got a couple new pieces of equipment that we're going to be uh, instituting this year into the leaf collection process. It's a one man self-contained leaf truck and then also a leaf back that goes uh, behind a tractor. And uh, those, those pieces of equipment will suck the leaves up instead of the traditional way of picking them up with hose and dump trucks and putting them in uh, trucks and then we have to tarp the trucks and drive the trucks down the dime mill. These trucks actually hold about the same amount as 10 regular truck loads do. So it's going to make it more efficient for us to pick them up with these pieces of equipment. Not only that, once they suck the leaves up, there's no need to have the sweeper go behind there and pick up leaves. So that frees our sweeper up to sweep the areas of town that, you know, he's not just confined to sweeping behind the leaf crews, which normally is the case with the sweeper in leaf season. He's pretty much dedicated just to the leaf crews. We can keep him on his regular schedule. With that being said, it's going to be imperative that the residents keep their brush separate of the leaves because those leaf trucks won't suck the brush up. So I, we've started uh, picking up the brush when it's been bundled, when it's been tied, or when it's placed in tea bags and kind of gotten to the point where the city just looks fantastic right now. And I have to commend, I mean, the crews just do a, a fantastic job going around and picking up the brush. In fact, when we started enforcing the, the bundled and tied stuff, I got many comments from the residents who said, wow, that service of picking up the brush, we just put it out there any old way we wanted, was just a wonderful thing that we loved. And we enjoy doing it. We love providing the service for the citizens, but it got to a point where now it needs to be more of a team effort. We need the citizens to put the stuff out in a manner where you know, a guy can go by, grab a bundle of brush, throw it on the truck, and we don't necessarily have you know a couple backhoes, a couple dump trucks out there burning gas, burning time, taking up four employees to do something that really, but just a little cooperation from everybody, and it has shown. Uh, that we can pick it up with just one man and make that way more efficient uh, form of picking up brush. So during the fall season, we're still going to continue to pick up brush. We still want it to be bundled and tied in two to four foot lengths, easily manageable by one person. Basically, I tell you, if you can carry it to the curb, my guys can pick it up. You know, I see. Right. You see, some of the elderly people in town, they're bringing their brush out there to the curb and setting it down. One of my guys can't pick that up. <laughs> yeah, we've got problems because she can get it out there we can get it and we have been doing it. The people, the crews, I can't say enough about what the crews have done to pick up the brush in the city and most of the citizens will tell you that and with that I'd also like to comment them because most of the citizens do take a ton of pride in the city and a lot of them already use the tea bag system and a lot of them already bundled their brush. So this wasn't nothing new for them. We've had comments from those who did do that 
saying to us, hey, you know, I pick, I bundle my brush, I put it in a tea bag. Why is my neighbor allowed to just throw it out any old way he wants and you get it? And part of that was we just wanted to provide the service and get the brush off the road to make it to make it better for cleaning up. But I got their point, and that's kind of what this whole process was predicated on. We had a lot of people that were already obeying the rules and regulations that had been in place for many years. We just started making everyone do it, and and it really is making a huge. We're seeing a significant amount of improvement on everything as far as brush goes and how it's put out. Well, it helps in the collection. It just helps speed things along. If everything's yes. uniform and put out to the side of the road the same way, right. um, as you say, bundled and tied, something that's manageable. Right. Clint, if I can just add uh, something that Jerry, uh, is, he's very modest, but when he's also come up with some very good, effective, and efficient uh, ways of helping citizens through our services and additional services, Jerry, why don't you share one of the things that you implemented with the large trash pickup along with the days that they do pick it up. That's a different change, and it's a positive service. Why don't you share it? It was your idea, and I, I appreciate it. That, that is correct. What we've done was we used to go out once a month and pick up bulk pickup, furniture, carpet, appliances, things of that nature that people would, you know, you buy a couch, you want to put a new couch out. They used to have to wait till the end of the month to put that couch out. Now you can place that that special trash item out with your regular trash. It's picked up on your regular trash days. We implemented this system, did not add any new employees, didn't take on any additional cost. We simply just said, look, we're going to allow you to put it out now at, at with your regular trash and we're going to pick it up. With that in mind, that same crew now with the bundle brush, which has just made that way more efficiently, when they're done with trash now, uh, they are going to turn right back around and they're going to go pick up the bundle brush and the tea bags. So this is becoming a waste department um, operation entirely. Now the street department is no longer going to be involved in actually picking up brush and tea bags. So that, that's creating with the same amount of employees, the same amount of time, we've got these guys out not only picking up your trash on your trash day, not only picking up your special trash on your trash day, but now your tea bags and your brush will also disappear on your trash day. It, it, it just, it's just going to make it flow better. Right. And continuing that, uh, Clint, is, you know, we've also, a lot of people get confused on holidays and services and, and when's our pickup day? Is it delayed or is it on? Uh, and uh, Labor Day is a, a good example. Uh, if you have uh, on Labor Days, which is a Monday, uh, if you have a trash day on Monday, Jerry, am I correct in saying they will pick it up on yes. Monday? Yeah, the only days that are delayed now are Christmas and New Year's. Every other day these guys are working. We used to delay a day and pick and it up on Saturday. catch back up. Right. But... Inevitably, the citizens would call and say, I didn't realize there was a change, and we'd have to go back home. We still didn't let them keep their trash all week. We would go back out and get it on that following Monday. Now there's no question. It's just Christmas and New Year's. They're delayed one day. The rest of the year, if your trash day is on a Tuesday, Monday, or Friday, or Thursday, or Wednesday, that's when your trash day is. It's just another way of being effective, efficient, and also uh, citizens can be, con they know the consistency of when we will be able to pick up things. And then, if that doesn't work for you, there's still the dye mill facility. Is that right, Jerry? Right, yeah. I was going to ask about right. the dye mill. Which is really something that uh, a lot of communities don't even have that to offer someone to take their, their stuff for free. Doesn't cost you anything. We have everybody from dump trucks and trailers down to Buick LeSabers with their trunks <laughs> full of brush coming down to the dump and putting their brush down there. The, the, the young man that we have running that has seen a steady increase since we've started implementing the rules as far as front bundle brush and seen a lot of citizens coming in there and placing their brush down there at the facility. We're open five days a week now, uh, Mondays and uh, Fridays from uh, 11 to 7, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7, and then Saturdays from 9 to 3. And we did the 3 to 7 during the week because that gives people a chance to get home from work and still have up till 7 o'clock that evening to take their brush down there. And it really is a well-run facility. I mean, we keep it really clean. Uh, the EPA has been down there and looked at it. We didn't get any violations this year. I'm knocking wood. So, <laughs> so, so far, that, that, that the whole facility, we used to call it the dye mill dump. Now the, the guys call it the botanical garden. <laughs> so it, it really is nice down there. Now, by no means is dye mill road a dump. 
No. It, it's and why don't you explain what things are acceptable to be taken out to dye mill? Uh, I mean, that isn't just load your garbage and take it out. No, that's a great question. I, actually, what it is is we take brick and block, landscaping brick and block. Um, we also take any kind of brush material. Uh, pretty much, if you can get it down there, they'll take it if it's brush. They don't take any wood or lumber down there at all. A lot of people show up there with pallets. We don't take any kind of pallets. Uh, you can take your garden waste down there, minus the fruits or vegetables. Uh, we're not allowed to have any kind of food products in there because it draws animal, and that is right. an EPA violation. Uh, so if you want to take your tomato vines down there, that's fine. There just can't be no tomatoes on them or <laughs> apples or things like that. Uh, and the facility is great. We have a we have a, a guy that comes in um, in August, September time frame, and all that giant pile of brush down there, he chips it all up and mulches, and it gets recycled. So it gets reused, uh, and we really do encourage people to go down to the dye mill facility if, if you have that capability. If not, bundle it up. The city will gladly pick it up on your trash day, place it in a tea bag. The service is going to become so much more efficient this way. Uh, I, I just can't even express. And like I said, I have to give the kudos to the, the citizens who really, you know, people people don't like change. And when something's going smoothly, especially, we're still offering the service. We're still going to pick it up. We're just going to need your help a little bit and assistance. And 99% and of the citizens in Troy already do that. They're already very, very helpful. They already place their leaves out correctly. Uh, it, it's just it's a great place to work because of the citizens. They, they really take pride in the community. And this is our way and their way working together uh, to keep it that way. I mean, the city's just going to be better for this. Well, like a well-oiled machine. Right. Civic Pride is city-wide, and, and I really want to give kudos to Jerry Mullins and his street crew. You know, many times we, we hear concerns, but people need to know uh, what our community offers in terms of its services. And as Jerry has said, we, we have the manpower to make things happen. We have just tried to be more effective and efficient, and with Jerry's leadership and his ideas, to be implemented uh, and then everybody uh, helping out just a little bit. But when we get into leaf season, I thought it was very important that we have Jerry come here to talk about the services that we offer now. The dye mill facility, I think, is open through thanks or till Thanksgiving, till Thanksgiving correct? Yes. So we have plenty of time during the se this season. Uh, you have choices to make. But uh, with everybody's cooperation, we'll get those leaves picked up. Uh, the crews are going to move forward. Uh, if you have brush pickup, uh, if you bundle those, it makes it easier. Tea bags are a, an easy way. I know I have a tea bag at home. I haven't filled it up yet to put it out. <laughs> so we'll just keep stuffing things in it. And, and that's the neat thing, too, is you can put as much as you can in that tea bag, and it'll get picked up. But I thought it was important. Uh, you know, that people in our community realize the street crew works very, very hard and they're trying to work very, very efficiently so that, as Jerry said, we do continue to have a beautiful committee, uh, community of which people can come and enjoy and, and all the activities that we provide and the look all goes together to make Troy, USA a wonderful place. Well, I've said it on the radio many a times before. I, I get up real early in the morning, so I'm downtown before the sun comes up. And it is a hotbed of activity always, things getting done, and it's things that people don't necessarily see by the time they're up and moving around, but uh, everybody in the city is always hard at work, and uh, keeping whether it's keeping the city clean, trash removal, street repair, picking up uh, the uh, brush, and uh, so you're to be commended. And, and you as well, Mayor. Well, thank you very much. And we'll probably do this again as we get closer to those leaves turning colors and we start to think what's going to happen soon. We'll, we may ask Jerry to come back and just again talk about procedures of what's, uh, what could help us uh, and be more effective and efficient and, and obviously to keep our community uh, continuing to look beautiful. Perfect. I would like to add one thing. Um, we we had uh, talked to some of the local businesses about the tea bags. One of the uh, concerns we had from citizens was they, they can't always get to City Hall. We are selling the City of Troy tea bags out of True Value now down on South Market. 
So if if you can't get to City Hall and get them, they're, they're, they have pretty long hours down there. They're a hardware store, so yeah. they're open to eight or nine o'clock at night. You can get the tea bags down there, same price, no difference in the price. Just as another way uh, availability, and we are checking with other other places to see if they might be interested in doing the same thing. Perfect, wonderful. Now, Mayor, uh, Council, Council uh, will. Uh, we kind of alluded to this. Labor Day is Monday. Yeah. Normally, we would have Troy City Council on Monday, but due to the holiday, we backed that up a day. So Council will meet on Tuesday, September the second, and it'll be at the same place at seven o'clock in City Hall. Uh, and certainly encourage people to come out. Um, there's always a discussion and there's always uh, resolutions and ordinances that we are considering uh, implementing. So uh, again, every, I want to give a shout out to our city council many times. You know, we don't always agree on particular issues, but that's a good thing. Uh, it's uh, that I want everybody to know that your representatives do their due diligence and they make decisions uh, and keep in mind every decision that is made by your Troy City Council and the administration here in the city of Troy, we have to live with as well. So I ask everybody to always realize that these are people who are giving of their time and talent and hours to the service of our community for the betterment of our community, just like Jerry Mullins and his crew do on a daily basis. All right. Anything you'd like to uh, wrap up with this morning, Mayor? Wow. Just uh, <laughs> we look forward to uh, September now. It, it, I don't know where the summer has flown, but uh, uh, we're heading into the home stretch. I just would ask everybody to be safe out there on this Labor Day weekend. Uh, and as uh, youngsters continue to come to school, be very cognizant of uh, uh, them crossing the streets and look both ways and all those good things so that everybody has a very safe uh, fall season. Yeah, we're back to seeing a lot of backpacks in the morning. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jerry Mullins and uh, our mayor, Michael Beamish. This has been the Mayor's Report for Troy TV's Fives, David DeNoyer. I'm Troy Community Radio's Clint Myers. This is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com, the new 1071 WTJN.